Malina che può crescere, prendere le sue cose e poi partire. At home, drawing pictures, all mountain tops. Sarò anche un soldato, ho la luce di sera. E in cambio non chiedo niente, soltanto... Lay to west, you told me... You know guys, I don't usually upload any vlogs or whatever, but I'm just in the middle of the night. It's New Year's, it's a New Year's night. So there are fireworks all around me. And I'm just sitting inside of my fucking car and recording fucking videos for you. So please appreciate it. And I don't know if I'll be uploading this because I've never uploaded vlogs, but I have actually came to the conclusion recently that I should start posting also something different than just just a mere music videos like playing guitar or singing or whatever also let me know guys what do you think about my singing because I'm quite new to singing still and it's something I'm not so confident about as my guitar playing because uh, yeah I'm I'm just much more new to this so yeah, but I have to say that there is something about vlogs recorded like on the run when you're doing something completely different and you're just like recording moments from your life. I actually really like the vlogs of Sam Sulek, if you know this guy, he's recording like the sports vlog or something and and yeah, basically I like this format a lot so maybe I'll start posting something. As you can clearly uh, hear, I'm not a native English speaker, so you can try guessing in the comments where my wild accent comes from. It's so fucking funny because I'm at the parking lot of a shopping mall near the place where I live in the middle of the night. There's not a living soul here, but still it feels a little bit weird to just scream Alice in Chains or Salt Garden as loud as I can, like randomly in the middle of the night, in a public place. And from time to time, there is a passerby walking somewhere here. So it's like a midnight right now. So yeah, quite an interesting feeling, really odd. Another funny thing is that I really like taking like a long night trips just with my car all around the city because city during the night, particularly in like weekdays when there's not a lot of parties, it's really odd and it's like a very weird vibe but if you have a lot of stuff to think about or like your for example if you have a company you can think about your strategy or about your future in general whatever you do in your life whether you run a business or work or go to university like for me it makes helps me to like set up my mind in like a completely different mood completely different headspace and like think about this stuff from a different perspective because it's like so odd it's like a different planet oh i don't know if you've heard about the uncanny valley experiment when something is like so close to be real but at the same time something is completely different and your brain kind of tells you that what you're looking at is not real but at the same time, kind of your recognition system in the brain tells you that it is. So just Google Uncanny Valley because it's very difficult to explain. But uh, yeah, basically that that's what I'm experiencing when I'm driving through the city at night on a weekday when it's completely empty. Also, you have those like spooky videos when you have like places that you've seen when you were a child. Uh, those are like creepy videos with like photos of playgrounds and things like this but basically they're slightly edited so they also give you like this uncanny feeling just google this as well because it's also like difficult to explain if you don't see it or maybe i will pass it into the video yeah i started recording it randomly preparing my gear for my another singing cover but actually i quite appreciate vlogging so maybe i'll be recording more of them because 
just talking to the camera is fucking relaxing for absolutely no reason and I guess not everyone's experiencing it but I'm just a talkative person and for some reason I like it. Oh yeah, for example, right now I need to take another break because I see a couple just randomly walking through a mall's parking lot on the almost midnight during the New Year's Eve and I don't fucking know what they're doing here. Mm, but basically, yeah, I feel too nervous about my singing or rather my screaming to record while they're here, so I have to wait a little bit. So I guess I'll just set up my uh, DAW for another Alice in Chains song. I wonder what to put here because I have to be honest that I used to be singing in a car for the last two years, but only in the car. And I've never really recorded myself, except of very few exceptional exceptional situations, but in general I didn't record myself, so I don't really know how do I sound when I sing. And because of it, I can't really predict how I'm going to sound on a given, on a given, um, on a given song. So I'm just randomly downloading like hundreds of backing tracks of like Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains and everything, and I'm just gonna be randomly recording like dozens of covers and then choosing the ones that went right because some of them go quite good and some of them are completely terrible so it really depends yeah the guy was looking at me like i'm a fucking idiot because you don't see it but i have a microphone here not like a small microphone or whatever but a normal studio microphone uh which is fucking huge and it's I don't fucking know how it's called in English. It's not a condenser, not a dynamic, but the third type of a microphone. And basically, uh, and basically, uh, yeah, it's a terrible type of microphone if you want to record it in like a place where, uh, which is not adapted to the to the recording. I mean, your room is not adapted. So basically, it's a terrible idea to record with this. But from what I've heard, uh, from the samples that I've recorded already, it's not terrible and for now it's fine and in general if it's gonna go fine and I'm gonna have uh, a lot of views and you're gonna appreciate it and I'll decide that I really wanna go into singing, then maybe I'll buy a better gear, uh, like a Shure 7, 7B or whatever it's called. SM7B, something like this. It's like a cool microphone that everyone's using and it looks so cool and this is the main reason why I want to buy it. But yeah, sometimes you have to make your uh, music gear choices based purely on their design and who gives a shit after all. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I bought my first guitar. Oh no, actually I've got my first guitar from my parents but my second guitar I bought purely based on its looks. I've never played it before. Actually, I didn't try many guitars before. I I was just scrolling through a Guitar Center website and I thought that the Jackson V looks freaking fucking great. So I've just, I've just uh, ordered it and it's my main guitar up until now. I've never been like a particularly gear guy, meaning that even right now, I didn't like try thousands of guitars. I just had two guitars and I was playing them in my in my room for like 10 years basically and that's how I learned guitar. I think this is also very important and people who aren't that focused on gear and st stuff like that which is secondary to be honest but purely on practicing and that's what they enjoy the most are actually people who end up going the farthest in music or at least staying the longest in developing their skills. Because to say that I really went far in music, I would have to achieve also at least moderate level of commercial success. Until then, I don't consider myself like artistically fulfilled. But this YouTube channel may change it, so please subscribe, hit the like button or whatever, because it's... 
yeah, it's my it's my main plan for my music career right now. Okay, I have Alice in Chains, Real Thing, Dan Bones, Man in the Box. Man in the Box is like super difficult and like hitting those lines is like, fuck, no. I mean, I've been trying them a lot like in the car. Sometimes I'm close to hitting them, but still I'm a little bit afraid of this song, but yeah, maybe let's try it out. Maybe, fuck, I know. Okay, I guess this part is going to go to the very beginning. Don't judge me based on what you're going to see in this video because it's so fucking silly and stupid. I'm just basically in the middle of the night at the shopping mall, mm, at the parking lot of a shopping mall recording. Yeah, basically this video is so unstructured that yeah, I have to reload my computer again because it's a shitty microphone and it's a shitty computer. Everything without the drivers that you need for actually recording music properly. So yeah, basically I have to restart my... I mean, I have to connect the interface cable to the computer before turning it on. Otherwise, it somehow doesn't read the, the interface. It just doesn't recognize it. So I have to first connect the USB cable to my computer and then turn my computer on. And otherwise, if I do it in a different order, then I just have to, I just have to basically restart my computer, turn it off completely and restart the operating system because otherwise it just doesn't read it. It's fucking weird and... Now I believe them bones are me. So say we are born into the grave. Nothing so alone, gonna end up a big old pile of damn bones. Now lie, they've gone on the red sky. Now feel so alone, gonna end up a big old pile of them. Now feel so alone, gonna end up a big old pile of them. I feel so alone, gonna end up a big old pile of them. Bones. No me. Probably fucking terrible. <laughs> Maybe I try a close up. Drifting. Fuck yeah. I had a teacher, a uh, singing teacher, for like a few months in my life, and I didn't really, or at least I felt like I didn't take much out of those lessons because I've never, I'm self thought in everything I do and even stuff that I learn at the university I don't really come to lectures I prefer to like learn stuff at home but now when I sing I sometimes uh, I sometimes recall some things that she said and actually it helps me and right now I just discovered that if I don't strain that much at the like higher notes I mean it's quite obvious she was repeating it for a very long time but basically like advice like don't strain at high notes it's so fucking general that you don't really know what does it mean i mean how to apply it how does it feel like not to strain 
and I think I just discovered it. So I'm gonna try another take of wood and maybe it's gonna work this time. And basically I put really a lot of work to my singing. And while I would consider myself quite naturally talented to guitar playing, I didn't have any fucking talent to singing. But for some reason, I always felt like it complements guitar uh, playing. And I just always really deeply wanted to learn to sing. And I put like hundreds of hours into it. And it was fucking terrible for like first three years when I was just singing in a car. And basically, at some point it just started to go quite well. And then I started recording videos and we're here. So it was quite recently that I started to improve actually and see any any improvement. So never give up guys, cause it was like fucking terrible. And it was basically, um, if I made a line graph of how my vocal development went like, it wasn't like slowly, slowly up and then maybe faster up. It was like literally at one level, even like fucking going down, going down, going down. And then for some reason it went up. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's still that much up. There's still a lot of work and still a lot of stuff that I want to improve. But it's getting better and it makes me feel so fucking good because I finally discovered like the proper way to sing, which as I said, it took me years and was a hell. And basically my parents hated me. Then later my roommates hated me for that. And actually for a while uh, I had a roommate who was an opera singer. So we practiced together. I also led, learned a little bit from him, but yeah, it's been a hell. But finally I'm at the place where it starts to work. So I'll just continue doing what I'm doing. Fuck. I should have come to this conclusion years earlier, but because I always wanted to sing, but as I said, I'm not naturally fucking talented. And I use this channel to play guitar too. I'll be just documenting my singing journey and Uploading even things that are like mediocre. Maybe not as separate videos, but put like a fragments inside of this vlog. Because basically, yeah, maybe it's gonna motivate some people. And yeah, I really want to document this journey. I regret a little bit that I didn't document my guitar journey and I didn't document my earlier singing days. So yeah, basically it's time to do it. Okay, the wood is recorded. I didn't listen to it, so I don't know how it sounds, but hopefully it went quite well. And maybe I'll put some fragments here of how it went for now. And a few months later, I'll put another fragments of my wood performance to see the progress. Because, yeah, with guitar, it was quite interesting because I it's so fucking true that you learn 95% of guitar within the first two years and then those last 5% of guitar skills takes you another 8 or 10 years to master. But those last 5% are what separates the average or a good player, let's say the good player, from like a master. And yeah, I think I wouldn't call myself yet a master, but I think that I'm getting closer to it. So fucking humble. And yeah, still there's some work to be done, but yeah, but it's quite fucking interesting because like after two years of guitar playing, I was like 14, 15. I was like, I started just before my 13th birthday. So yeah, basically, I was like 14, 15 when I played for two years and I already knew like sweep picking, like toppings, but toppings aren't hard at all, to be honest. Like fast alternate picking, like uh, maybe I wasn't super good at Fury because I wasn't interested in Fury at all at that point, but I knew like the probably still more than 90% of metal guitarists that I later played with. Maybe I just came across only poor uh, guitarists, but basically like scales, chord creation, chord construction, things like this, basically how to create 
a song, like a basic harmony. I didn't know how to follow chords though inside, I mean, during the song. I mean, I knew like a theory, what's supposed to be done and how should I do it, but I just didn't fucking bother. I had too much of a punk rock approach to bother with it. I started practicing it much later. But yeah, basically, as I said, and those are those last 5%. It's like not even following the chords when you play guitar, but um, being aware of every, I mean, every note that you're playing, what role does it play in the context of both the chord that is played in the background right now and also the song in general and also, I mean, the riff in general and also the structure of the entire song. You can think about it even that broadly and you should and you should be aware of all of those details when you play and i'm not saying that i'm always 100 percent aware of those but i'm getting closer to it and not only the let's say conventional notes but also the notes that are you know controversial so basically you have 12 notes and you shouldn't think you shouldn't restricting yourself to only a scale or only the notes of a chord or whatever but right now I'm trying to think about it as 12 notes and I understand the meaning and the role of every note in the context of a chord that is played and then I'm choosing those notes not really thinking about the scales or chord shapes or arpeggios. It's difficult because if you're playing arpeggios and scales for 10 years it's difficult to forget them and think about it as a chromatic scale and understanding relations between notes but this is this is what separates the very good guitarist from master. Another thing is that uh, another thing is that uh, what do I want to say? And the last thing that I didn't really even start practicing yet. Once again, it's one of those things that I'm putting aside all of the time, but it's controlling your voicings within the within the song. Because when you're playing, let's say, three notes per strings, like little chord shapes on uh, three, uh, three highest strings or like the middle ones, like B, G and D, like small chord shapes, like funk stuff, etc. You can basically, if you create a riff like that, you can think about it as three different lines also. Three different lines being played constantly and playing different different notes of a chord. And you should think about it like this. Not as a chord shape, but as separate, uh, separate notes. And you should understand when each of those voicing goes. So each string is separate voice and you should be entirely in control of those voicings. And not always. When I start playing more than one note, I completely lose uh, lose the count of what is what and I'm just playing them kind of based on the shapes that I memorized or based on arpeggios. I think about it as a like a fragment of arpeggio. But yeah, I want to develop this ability and I think this is, yeah, this is one of those like very high quality stuff that many few guitarists really know super precisely and are super aware of everything that's going on there because there's a lot of people that have some level of understanding of that or some level of awareness but there are very one of them is like christian lange or whatever is his name he's like a jazz player you can see in his playing that he's super aware of this and he's has super control over it and i would like to develop it because i don't have yet uh, possessed it we chase me spring and light. Some interesting stuff about Alice in Chains, because you know, they have like, first, Nutshell, a song which a lot of people would consider very depressing. For me, it's like very relaxing, it's like beautiful, and it makes me feel just so good, like I'm alive. And I don't really understand, like, Lane Stiley and all of the story and because like if you look at grunge it's like my favorite genre of music Pearl Jam, Soundgarden and Listen Chains but I would to be honest prefer them with happiest lyrics happier lyrics and yeah 
basically, you know, I've never been like a depressed person. I'm a very optimistic. I always like believe in myself and chase what I consider important in life. You know, self-discipline, things like this. So it's very sad for me to see that my idols ended up like they ended up. And I love this music, but on the other hand, I really can't agree with the meaning because I mean, there is just so many beautiful things in life and like, mm, I just finished recording natural at this hour when I'm so sleepy. It's such a beautiful song. It's so relaxing. If you forget about the lyrics, it sounds like heaven. And then the lyrics. Yeah. It's, it's really difficult for me to wrap my head around. Because the beauty of those sounds is just incredible. It's heavenly. And the entire story behind the band and the song and the story that actually is mentioned in a song. It's so, it's so different. Yeah. I'm mess around as a little boy I grew up, made a blade, my new toy Friends said, boy, what you screwing around? I say, yes, yeah, yeah! Under a hill With just a few notches and my belt and I grew up, went into rehab You know the doctors never did me no good they say, boy, you gotta be a new man I said, thank you very much again I brought 50 bucks, yeah, yeah, yeah Under a hill With just a few notches on my belt Took it away, yeah, don't want no more Cause I'm going down the steps on a white line Going down the steps on a white line Going down the steps on a white line straight to nowhere. Oh, I'm slowly starting to get a sore throat. So basically, I didn't even record a half of the songs I intended to, but I'm sitting here for more than an hour right now. Damn, I thought that someone's going there. It's fucking creepy at this hour. Oh, damn. Whew. I really felt like someone's going there. Ridiculous. Yeah, anyway, I didn't even record a half of the song that I was uh, that I intended to But there's one I, that I didn't intend to but I remember That it was going quite well and it's called Poison by Alice Cooper. So I'm guess I'm gonna try it and go with it right now and Yeah, maybe I'll go back tomorrow to this shopping mall and record another Good memories of the song. It reminds me of a 
first girlfriend that I ever had in a junior high school. I was like 14 years old. That was a time when basically there was this race between guys who's gonna have sex first. And that was me throughout all of the people that I knew. So it's been weird because I wouldn't expect it. Before I was like a very nerdy guy. I was sitting with books all day, playing computer games, not doing a lot of stuff. But then I discovered playing guitar and everything changed within like a year. And now I was quite popular, even I would say in my junior high school. So yeah, only great memories with this song. Maybe you guys don't know, but I also run TikTok, where I upload basically the same videos that I do on YouTube. And recently, someone wrote me a comment on TikTok that I should... That actually, I have a good voice, but I should sing pop music instead of rock, because it's a pop-sounding uh, voice. And when I listen to my recording of Poison, particularly a cappella, I really see it, so maybe I'll make a little change and start singing pop music. Oh, okay guys, I'm fucking fucking tired. I recorded... I didn't record the songs that I was talking about, but I record others. So in general I have probably around 10 songs. As you can probably hear, <clears throat> my throat is so fucking sore at this point. I was experimenting a little bit with Linkin Park, Numb. Uh, yeah, basically I could hit those notes, uh, probably even today if I spend like another 30 minutes trying, but I feel like it's going to be better if I'll just come with a fresh throat and try to focus only on that song, maybe on another day. And yeah, I feel like I'm getting closer, particularly because basically I destroyed my throat trying to sing the entire chorus of a uh, numb by Linkin Park, uh, entire chorus at once, and then I was like, damn, even this guy in the recording is not singing it all at once, but there are actually two voices overlapping, singing like one sentence each, uh, every other sentence of a chorus. And then I was like, damn, I should record it the same way, but actually my throat is al already so fucking dead that uh, basically I made like a demo version, but I don't think it's going to be good enough for YouTube. So I'll just, uh, I'll just, uh, I won't upload it yet, but uh, hopefully in a near future, I'll be able to sing it properly and it's going to be fine. Another difficult thing is that I can start as, because the verses are like very light and it's like very angelic kind of voice and then there are choruses when he's screaming like now I've become so numb and this kind of stuff and it's difficult for me to go from I mean first verse is okay then there's a chorus and then there's another verse and it's difficult for me to go from this voice to like can you see that you're smothering me, holding too tightly, afraid to lose control? What I did right now maybe wasn't terrible, but it was uh, in a lower key and I have to sing it higher. And, uh, you know, I don't lower the keys of any songs that I sing ever. So I just work on them until I can sing them in the original key. So I somehow attached this stuff to the uh, doors of my car and I was able to use a normal studio microphone in this place. So yeah, mm. yeah, le less work than I expected to with this knob. Unless, unless there is something unexpected that is going to happen on my next session, but yeah, I should be able to sing it quite well relatively soon. And uh, I'm very happy with that. As I said, the most difficult thing is to go from the scream back to um, the normal voice, because there are just 
two completely different kinds of vocal emission and for some reason it's easy to go from uh, strong to light but it's very difficult to go from it's very other way around it's easy to go from light to strong but it's very difficult to go from strong to light without distortion because i'm starting to like uh, yelling and uh, singing like this and basically choking and that's something that i don't want so um, yeah i have to somehow gain uh gain control over it although it's doable it's doable and i think that it's it's a matter of take as i said i would probably sing it probably today but i would have to spend like 30 minutes and it was be just a lag game until I get the good take when I didn't fuck this up and I think that instead of it I can just practice a little bit more gain confidence and gain, gain the ability to be at least 70% sure that I'm hitting it right and then record it it's also about like a development because yeah mm -hmm. I remember that even when I was playing guitar and I was recording some solos on YouTube and I Let's say that I recorded a. Uh, let's say that I recorded a uh, a video where I'm playing, let's say, Tornado of Souls solo or whatever. But I knew that I tried it like 50 times, and 49 were terrible, and the last one was quite good. I still didn't feel comfortable uploading it to YouTube. Uh, I usually waited like three months until i uh until i could uh play it 99 of takes properly and then i would upload it to youtube so it's a very good approach in life it makes your life a little bit harder but um, i think that the most important personality trait that made me a good guitarist which also make my life a lot of harder i mean make my journey probably no, maybe didn't make it longer, but made it certainly harder and I had to, oh yeah, I had to wait longer for rewards. But this personality trait is actually that I love to make my life harder. You know, I usually practice guitar on the clean channel because it makes it harder. And then, and usually I just record a solo on a clean channel, channel and then I add distortion in, uh, in the program, which, Actually, and then it's like a wow effect. It sounds 10 times better. And also by playing a lot of on a clean channel, you gain the ability to, uh, you gain ability to just play better and play more precisely than other guitarists. And it gives you uh, the edge over um, other players. And yeah, I recommend you all guys playing on a clean channel, practicing on a clean channel a lot. Actually, I spend 99% of the time playing on a clean channel and it just gives amazing effects.